Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or indeed good evening, depending on your time zone and depending on when you are watching this. I'm James Innes, and this is my YouTube show, The Jobs Guru. It is Tuesday, the 25th of August, 2020, and it's such a, a beautifully grey, drizzly, and generally miserable day here in, in England that I thought I might film outside for a change. Mm, lovely. Might even have a barbecue later when it starts to rain. Um, Welcome to today's episode, a particularly warm welcome to all those who have subscribed since the last episode. And if you haven't yet subscribed, then please do think about subscribing so you don't miss out on the next episode. Today I'm going to be concluding my regular Tuesday series of valuable interview advice, where they look at the various different interview scenarios. One-on-one -on -one interviews, panel interviews, competency-based and uh, situational interviews, group interviews, distance interviews, very topical, and assessment centres. If you have any questions or comments as you watch, then do please type them into that comment section below. That's me pretending to type, by the way. I don't actually type like that. It looks like I'm playing the piano. Um, and if you like what you see, then please do hit that YouTube thumbs up. So, planning and preparing for an interview is absolutely essential. As you're going to be up against many other applicants, you have to take this opportunity to make an impact. Your CV may have helped you get your foot in the door, but you need to do the rest. And learning how to handle every possible kind of interview, from a brief chat over the phone, through to a trip to an assessment centre is a great place to start. Let's start with one-on-one -on -one interviews, okay? The one-on-one -on -one interview is, is one of the most common interview types, but one that can still give candidates the strong sensation that they are going into a duel. Now, it's important to remember that an interview is a two-way process. It's just as much about whether or not the interviewer will make a suitable employer as whether or not you will make a suitable employee. So here are my top tips for getting you through a one-on-one -on -one interview. Number one, establish a rapport with your interviewer. Uh, an interview should be a friendly, but professional, obviously, discussion. You might not enjoy the experience, the other person might not either, but the more enjoyable you can make it, the better the likely outcome. Two, don't let rapport go too far. You need to keep a certain professional distance, not being too intimate or matey. Three, avoid humour. You may think that this is a way to break the ice in a tense or awkward situation, but jokes are generally out of place at interviews. And four, undertake mock interviews. Getting someone you trust to play the role of interviewer is probably the very best way to practice your interview technique, other than sitting lots of interviews, of course. Now, panel interviews next, an extension of the classic one-on-one -on -one interview. The panel interview just means that you'll be faced with not one, but two, three, uh, maybe four, uh, or even more interviewers, it depends. I find that candidates are normally considerably more nervous about attending a panel interview than they would be if they were simply attending a one-on-one -on -one interview. But there's really no need to be. Provided that you've prepared thoroughly and follow these top tips, there shouldn't be anything you can't cope with. Oh yeah, and it's starting to rain again. Number one, try to get an understanding of who is on the panel and what role each one is fulfilling. In particular, try to identify the, the chair, the person who is ostensibly in charge of the proceedings. Number two, make regular eye contact with all panel members in reasonable equal measure. You must build rapport with each and every one of them if you can. Three, focus attentively on the panel member posing the question, but address your answer to all of the panel members by uh, steering your gaze steadily between them. Number four, avoid focusing too much of your attention on just one panel member, as they will all contribute to reaching a decision on your application. In particular, never underestimate the quiet one on the panel. And five, smile and thank each panel member when the interview comes to an end. Makes a difference. Competency-based and situational interviews, perhaps, I don't know, amongst the least understood, the scarier sounding. Um, Competency-based, behavioural, situation and evidence-based interviewing, they're all the range. You've probably heard of these concepts, but possibly, quite, or probably, you aren't really sure what they actually mean. So let me talk you through these and how to uh, ace them every time. So basically, all of these interview types focus on the same thing, your ability to handle certain specific tasks and situations, drawing on your past performance, competency-based, or in response to a hypothetical scenario, situational. In effect, can you do the job? Do you have what it takes? The hypothetical situational interview questions can be more complicated, as you'll, you're not going to have the luxury of being able to refer to past examples, but you can certainly learn from them. Think back to problems you have dealt with successfully in the past, recall what action you took, and relate this to the hypothetical situation you are now presented with. 
Here are some important guidelines to consider when answering competency-based questions. So, number one, always use examples from your own experience. Even if you are not specifically asked for an example, okay, so can you give me an example of when you have successfully coached a member of your team? Okay, okay, you're going to be expected to give one anyway. Um, or are you able to make difficult and tough choices? Now, that's when you haven't been specifically asked for an example, but give one anyway if you possibly can. Number two, don't fall into the trap of just saying that you possess certain abilities. You need to pr provide evidence. You don't just say, well, yes, I'm a team player. You need to provide a situation, evidence, proof, an example. Number three, ideally refer to experiences from the workplace, including voluntary work. These are generally considered to be stronger than examples from your studies, hobbies, or personal life, but examples from those spheres of your life are also acceptable in the absence of one from your working life. Number four, refer to situations with positive outcomes so that the interviewer can see you in the best possible light. If, however, you are required to use a more negative example, then you just need to make sure that your answer demonstrates what you have learned from this particular situation and that you know what you would do differently next time. And number five, apply the STAR technique to ensure that the examples you give emphasize the contribution that you made as well as what the outcome was. Now, here's a breakdown for you of the STAR model, in case you're not familiar with it. S, T-A-R, S, situation. Brief context that the answer makes sense for the listener. T, task. What specifically you were required to do in relation to the situation. A, action. What did you do to achieve the task in hand? R, result, the outcome of your specific contribution. Quantifiable, if possible. Group interviews. Now, group interviews are where multiple candidates attend and are assessed simultaneously. That's not only time-saving for the employer, but it can also enable them to identify how you work within a team and what role you naturally fulfill. What role you fulfill in the activity is that you may face in a group interview should depend on what role the employer wants you to do. Are they looking for a leader? Are they looking for someone who brings out the best in others? Are they looking for an idea generator? If you can establish what sort of a team player they want you to be, you can adapt your behavior accordingly. Either way, demonstrate that you ha can and have helped the group to achieve its objectives. Now, there are two main types of activity you'll like to encounter at a group interview. One is the, the verbal activity type. That's um, group in, you know, role-playing exercises or presentations. And two is physical activities. That can be practical problem solving or the physical construction of something, you know, Krypton factor kind of thing. My top tip here is not to treat the other candidates like the enemy. They may be the competition, but you will be assessed on your ability to get on with and work with these people. So be friendly and communicative from the start. Now, distance interviews, very topical at the moment. Okay, now, whilst telephone interviews, they've been commonplace for decades now, advancements in technology and, of course, a recent pandemic means that distance or remote interviews are increasingly popular and really very much now here to stay. Telephone interviews have been traditionally used as a shortlisting technique to whittle down a large number of applicants to a final shortlist for face-to-face -face or video interviews. Your objective is, is normally to get to the next round rather than to actually get the job as such. That's a subtle but important difference. A telephone interview isn't really that different from a classic one-on-one -on -one interview. Now, whilst issues such as dress sense and body language are irrelevant, most of my other interview advice still applies. Other tips specific to telephone interviews would be one, smile. The interview, yes, smile on the telephone. The interviewer might not be able to see you smiling, but they may be able to hear it in your voice. You'd be surprised. And you can hear a frown as well, actually. Two, articulate clearly and get your tone of voice right. Three, try standing up. An erect and confident posture will help you to come across more confidently. Salespeople do it all the time. Number four, conduct the interview somewhere calm and quiet to avoid background noises. Number five, like that woodpecker. Number five, avoid eating, drinking, smoking, or chewing gum. Um, all distinctly, uh, you know, uh, they're all distinctly audible. Although it is, of course, acceptable to take an occasional sip of water to stop your mouth drying up, or even beer. They'll never know the difference. All of these tips apply to video-based interviews too, but this time, body language and dress sense do matter, and so do these other things. So one technology, test it first, make sure you understand how to use it. Sounds obvious, so many people get it wrong, okay? Problems using Skype, whatever it might be, Zoom, uh, make sure you've loaded the latest update, etc. You know, be on top of that. Two, background visuals, control everything that the recruiter will see when they connect. And three, background noises, keep the cat out of the room, switch off other devices, uh, maybe even disconnect the doorbell, actually, etc. Now, final category, assessment centres. Okay, when I was first invited to attend an assessment centre, I, I pictured a sort of concrete bunker in the middle of a forest where you spend your days tackling assault courses and having your face shoved in the mud. Now, 
<laughs> they can be intimidating, yes, but this particular image couldn't be further from the truth. For a start, an assessment centre generally isn't a centre at all. It's a term used to describe an event that will commonly take place at an organisation's normal premises, and it's unlikely to last more than one day, although it can sometimes last you know, two or three days, it depends. And rather than assault courses, it's normally a mishmash of other standard interview scenarios. More popular with large organisations, including for, for graduate recruitment drives, for example, they're also common in the public sector, so you need to know what to expect. From the recruiter's perspective, assessment centres are costly to host, but they enable employers to thoroughly assess a large number of candidates in a variety of situations in a very short space of time, a relatively short space of time. So here are some of the interview scenarios that you could that could come into play as an assessment centre. You know, standard one-on-one -on -one interviews, panel interviews, group interviews, aptitude or psychometric tests, case studies or group exercises, presentations, that's very common, or intray or e-tray tests as well. Now, so assessment centres, they can be demanding, but they can also actually be great fun. Do your best to, to enjoy the opportunity, and that will really help you to showcase your skills and make sure you come across well and leave with a smile, as always. So now, we're not far from the end of today's show, just as well, because it's about to chuck it down. Um, I've been coping with the light drizzle, but it looks like a real thunderstorm's coming our way now. Um, I'm going to be back tomorrow, Wednesday. Remember, this show is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday each and pretty much every week. I might take a break at Christmas, then again, I may not. Just two more things. First, I must squeeze in some routine but important requests. Do please check me out on social media and connect, follow, or otherwise stalk me. But please don't troll me. Trolls, get a life. If you have any questions or comments about this episode, about the show in general, indeed about life, the universe things that go bump in the night, whatever. Do please let me have them in the comment section below. If you like this episode, do please hit the YouTube thumbs up. If you've done that, then maybe think about subscribing and, new prop, ringing that bell so you don't miss out on the next episode. If you've already done all that, then thank you very much. Finally, what's happening in the next episode? Well, tomorrow I'm going to be tackling a question from one of my viewers and also looking at an interview question from one of my books, namely, where does your current employer think you are at the moment? Ouch. Tricky one. I do hope you'll tune in. Thank you for watching today. Keep safe and be well, my friends. Goodbye.